Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so with this null here, it's already pre-primed, so we don't have to worry about priming it up, so we can get straight into painting. So what I'm going to do is start off with some uniform grey here, and uniform grey is a, a blue tone grey, so it's going to be a nice bit of visual interest, and I want to go for a, a coloured grey rather than a straight neutral grey on the nulls, because looking at the official artwork, they sort of have a bluish tinge to them, and I want to get as close to that as I can, and uniform grey seems to be a good uh, match for that out of the colors I have so if you want to go for the same thing that I'm doing here a nice bluish gray will help out with trying to get that exact color match and then all I'm doing is painting up the base areas of the fur and where the skin would naturally be I guess technically if you were painting a human and we're just leaving out the very big tufts like he has on his back and his arms we'll be doing those in another color then once we have that uniform gray down I'm going to come in now with some necromancer cloak and the necromancer cloak we're going to be using to be painting the areas that I said we were avoiding before. So the big, big tufts of fur that he's got on his arms and on his back. We want to be on the necromancer cloak. And the necromancer cloak, again, is a another grey, but it's a very, very dark grey, almost black. So we're going to tie it in with the colours of the knolls that we have uh, in the official D&D artwork, which is what I'm trying to get here. And this knoll pack leader has a nice bit of uh, armour and all sorts of accessories to help kid him out show off that he's a big boss leader type uh, monster then once we've painted up those nice black tufts we're going to come in with some skeleton bone now and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting up all of the knoll's armor um, as you can see this knoll pack leader is wearing a lot of armor all over him and uh, looking at the artwork as well as just looking at the actual model itself he has a lot of bones covering him and he's basically made uh, a bone armor of sorts out of all different types of skeletons and stuff that he's collected over his many many battles so that's what i'm going for here with a bit of storytelling so all of the armor that he is wearing except for the gauntlets um i'm going to be painting over in the skeleton bone because i want it to be that he's made all of this armor himself out of the people he's slain over his time as pack leader then once we have all that bone painted up, we're going to come in now with some cavalry brown, which is a nice reddish brown. And we're going to be painting up his uh, skirt that he has on here, this nice sort of uh, leather sort of chainmail skirt. You could also paint this up as chainmail if you wanted to. I want it to go with the leather and add in a bit of color into the piece. And the reddish brown that we have here is going to contrast nicely with the blue gray we've got in here and the bone colors in here. So it's just a nice bit of visual interest but again you could paint this up whatever color you feel like then once we have a skirt painted up what we're going to do now is come in with some burnt umber and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting up the gauntlets in the burnt umber so this is the part i said before that we wanted to avoid i didn't want to do absolutely every bit of armor and bone because i want a bit of color interest into the piece so coming in with the uh, burnt umber is going to give a nice very dark uh, brown into the mix and add just another bit of visual interest so we're just painting them up with the burnt umber and being careful to avoid those spikes as well. We're going to be coming in with a metal color later on to paint those up as well. Then once we have those gauntlets painted up, we're going to come in now with some monster brown. And for the monster brown, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting up this little bit of uh, strapping he has here, uh, holding up all his uh, nice bits of uh, bone and his skulls and stuff there. We're just making this leather backing uh, in the monster brown color avoiding the little bit of rope we're going to be painting that up a different color itself but we just want another color of brown there just like i said we want to keep adding some visual interest to this piece and this is going to help bring that out then once we have that painted up we're going to come in now with some hemp rope and as the name suggests we're going to be painting up the rope around his belt as hemp rope it's a nice uh sort of yellowish green tone color it's another color again that we want to add more visual interest it's nice having a whole bunch of visual interest to the piece as you're looking at it makes nearly every single bit stand out from one another and that's what we want to try aim for while we're painting up this null pack leader he's a big standout intimidating monster and that's how we want to paint him up as 
Okay, so once we have that complete, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some deck tan, which is a nice off-white color again, slightly different from an ivory. So what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to be using it to be painting up all of the wrappings that our null pack leader has on him. He has uh, some wrappings around his ankles, as you can see here, holding them up. And as well as that, you don't want to forget that we want to do the wrappings around the base of his axes that he's got there as well. So don't forget to do that while you're painting them up. Then once we've completed those wrappings, what we're going to do now is come on with some squid pink because we want a nice big bright colour to help focus us in on that face a little bit more. And squid pink's going to help do that and we're going to paint up his tongue that nice bright pink colour. Now with his tongue painted up, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some black. And for the black what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be painting in his eyes and his nose in the black. Um, looking at the official artwork, they have very uh, dark and uh, menacing eyes, so I'm just going with straight black for this as well as the tip of the nose. Uh, you may want to go with some crazy yellow eyes or even whites of the eyes. I thought I'd just try out black and see how it goes in these dark, deep pools, uh, looking into the abyss as you're sort of fighting this monster. So that's why I chose the black here. Then once we've picked out those eyes, what we're going to be doing is going to come in now with some ivory. And for the ivory, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be picking out all the teeth that our Noel is showing with his uh, fearsome grin. So just very carefully, as you can see here, I'm using more of the side of my brush than the actual tip of my brush. So I can really pick them out without accidentally stabbing in the wrong place with the tip of the brush. So just an easy tip there to help with smaller bits of detail. Use the side of the brush. Okay, so once we've done that, what we're going to do now is come in with some charred brown. And with the charred brown, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be painting up the handles of the axe. Because we've got some nice uh, wooden handles for his axe, and that's what we want to use our nice dark charred brown for. Um, to really help stand it out from that burnt uh, umber colour that we have on there. It's going to be uh, slightly different tones of brown, and that's what we want to do is introduce different tones and colours. So it looks uh, different from a distance than all close up. Then once we have those handles painted up, we're going to actually come in with a crazy colour here. I'm going to use some nice bright green. And all I'm going to be doing is he has some nice little sort of tabs and other bits of things hanging from his belt here. And so I've decided that I'm going to use some green. I'm not quite sure what they're actually supposed to be. I'm just imagining the sort of other bits of um, things he's taken from enemies. So I'm going to come in here and paint them up a bright green to add in that bit of striking color that we've got onto the piece that is nowhere else on the piece just to add again more visual interest then once we've picked out all those little pieces we're going to come in now with some gun metal which is a nice dark silver metal that we want and again it's nice and obvious what we're going to be doing here but i'm going to be painting up the blades of our axe so giving a nice overall coverage and don't forget to be careful when you're getting the other side of this miniature because they are very very close to her, his face so be a little bit careful around there as well as that you also want to be painting up the little spikes that he has on his gauntlets as well so don't forget that as well as a nice big shoulder piece he's got on here he's also got some spikes on there so it's a very very spiky piece so be careful when you're trying to paint all over the areas but don't be afraid you can always come back at this stage and cover over any mistakes then once we have all of that silver painted up on our gun metal, we're going to come in now and start our washes. So starting off with Agrax Earthshade. So Agrax Earthshade, we're going to be applying all over the base uh, areas of our knoll uh, that aren't the bone color and aren't metal. So pretty much everything else. So we want to be covering the fur, the leather areas, uh, even the, the straps that he has on his uh, ankles and... Uh, even as you can see very tight areas in between the pieces of armor so just everywhere that isn't metallic and that isn't bone we want to be covering in this Agrax Earthshade and then once our Agrax Earthshade is all dry we're going to come in now with some known oil and for our known oil what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be placing on all the areas that are metallic so everywhere we've placed it up in that gun metal color is where we want to be doing the uh, known oil wash just being a little bit careful that we don't want to have it too much pooling and running over everywhere we've already placed our agrax earthshade because we don't want to have uh, black spots on our areas where we've had the brown wash so being a little bit careful in those sort of areas 
Then once our known oil is completely dry, we're going to move on now with some seraphim sepia. And seraphim sepia is a really good uh, wash to place over bone, giving it that realistic sort of bone, uh, aged bone look that we are after here. So placing it everywhere we've got our bone, so all over that armor. Don't forget the little skulls and the little teeth that he has hanging around his belt as well. Giving it all over wash, being careful not to get it, let it pull up anywhere that we don't want it to and accidentally run into the areas where we've placed those other washes as well. So just be a little bit careful about that, especially since there's so many areas where the seraphim sepia can run off. And then once we have that seraphim sepia all dried, it's time to start highlighting. So coming back in with our skeleton bone here, and we want to be, when we're placing our highlights, hitting the areas where the sun would naturally hit and give off that little bit of brighter shine. So we're looking at anywhere like the, the tips of the spikes he has on here, the little teeth that are on his uh, helmet made out of skulls. So being very careful and meticulous where we want to place these sort of in a realistic sort of way. And you can see here that I'm painting little lines uh, rather than big swatches of area because I'm only really trying to catch the edges rather than the whole piece. I'm not trying to paint the whole piece over again. I'm just trying to catch all the little bits of the edges. And then once we've done that, we're going to come in now with some Cavalry Brown again. And all we're going to be doing is basically placing little dots onto our little scales. This is going to be very, very tedious work here. Um, but all I'm doing is just placing a little dot or stripe just on the bottom of the each individual scale. So it's like a little bit of sun uh, refracting from there. So it is a very tedious process, so don't be afraid if you want to quickly dry brush them on or just avoid this step entirely but it's just to add in that little bit of extra element of detail then once we've picked out all those little pieces we're going to come in now with some burnt umber and we want to paint over that area where we've already placed our burnt umber on before but again always just hitting those edges making it a little bit lighter since our wash has darkened everything down and make it look naturally like the sun is hitting it and giving a little bit of bounce of light and then once we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to come in now with some dry rust. And this is a nice effect paint that's going to give us some nice uh, rusty aged look to our metallics. And all I'm going to be doing is I'm only going to be placing it on the axes, as you can see here. Giving a real stab and dry brush, just trying to make him look all nasty, old and used like he's been using for a long time. And he doesn't really care too much about how he keeps them as long as those tips are sharp. So giving a nice overall dry brush here and adding in that rusty effect. And then once we've gotten a nice build up of rust effect, we're gonna come back in with our uniform gray. And then all I'm gonna be doing is doing the highlights for our skin or the main part of his fur, uh, rather than skin for our knoll here. Uh, but just again, hitting those high points. So it's got some nice uh, muscle detail in here so we can pick out the tops of the muscle and keep all that wash in the recesses. Uh, don't forget to pay attention to the face as well just since this pla one has some really deep sculpts of where the muscle is it's a nice easy one to pick out where we want those highlights to be and then once we've done that what we're going to do now is come in with some shining silver and this is a very bright silver a lot brighter than our gunmetal so we've, all of our edges of our metallics are going to be super bright and shiny and we just want to be uh, very careful making sure we only hit the edges of the area so Again, our null pack leader has lots of spikes. He has very sharp, hard angles. So it's actually quite nice and easy to pick out the areas that would naturally be hitting the sun and all those shining points that we want to have on our miniature. Especially since we've got this shining silver, it's going to really help out and emphasize all those hard edges on the miniature. As well as that, I also want to be uh, painting in some nice long stripes just down the blade of the sword so he has a very uh, sharpened edge of the sword as you will see me start doing now I'm painting in some stripes so it's keeping the rust and the gnarliness of the weapon looking like it's sharp and it's constantly being used
And with that, we have now finished painting up our null pack leader from the Dungeons and Dragons Wiz Kids range. And you can see by just adding a few pops of color into the miniature, we've got a nice standout piece on the table, and he's going to look like a leader against all his null buddies. So I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you guys, whether you want to paint along or you just enjoy watching me paint up some cool miniatures. But with all that out of the way, guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.